Good day, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us. Um, we shall be starting the next two minutes or so whilst we wait for some more people to actually sign in. So, uh, good day, good afternoon, everybody. Good morning or good evening to those that are coming from uh, different uh, time zones. Thank you very much for all of you for uh, signing on board and really showing a keen interest in terms of interacting uh, around our sector and some of the issues around the, our recovery plan. Um, I'm very grateful today to be joined by the CEO of the Tourism Business Council of South Africa, Mr. Chifiwa Chivengwa. Thank you very much for taking the time and uh, joining us, uh, Chifiwa. Thank you very much, Sisa, and cool. uh, thank you for having me. Uh, ready for the discussions. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. Um, I'm sure most of you would have heard me refer quite a lot to the TBCSA as uh, being the leading voice of the sector. So today is going to be twofold. One is to hear a little bit more about TBCSA, who they are, what they do, and what contribution that they are making towards the sector and being the leading voice you know, of the sector, especially to government and those uh, powers that be. Secondly, as well, is that I'll also give you a bit of an update in terms of where we find ourselves in terms of the recovery plan, especially as related to the risk adjusted framework of the country, as it were. But before we start, I'd like to uh, just note a couple of things. I think the first one is, uh, you know, these sessions are here for us to uh, engage. Um, essentially, and I understand the frustration, is that it may not what you want to hear, but please understand that we're opening up the channels so that we can start to have an exchange. And uh, at times, I think the frustration is thrown at us at SA Tourism. Well, it is what it is, and we will deal with them as we go through. So one of the observations that we saw was that um, some people were registering or signing on as other people, and therefore posting comments um, as if they are those people. Uh, on two occasions, I got two people who called me and where they showed me a screen grab of certain comments were made, but they said very clearly to me that they are not attributable to them. And uh, I don't know what the term is, but someone else was, uh, in, you know, being an imposter as being someone else. And uh, again, is uh, I'd like to kind of uh, say to everybody is to just treat each other with respect and uh, make sure that you can put up points forward as well. It was also brought to my attention that there are some people who may, again, maybe as a point of anger, frustration, want to disrupt our meeting, our conversation today, by either flooding up the chat line or Q&A with all sort of obscene stuff. Again, I, I want to say I understand where we are at, I understand the frustration, and uh, again, I will take whatever comes, you know, our side. But uh, just be aware that uh, as South African tourism, in fact, neither South African tourism nor TBCSA has the keys to open up the sector or open up the borders or any of that stuff, right? Uh, the power is essentially with government. Uh, SA Tourism is essentially an agency of government, but not government itself. And uh, through engagement, through getting a, a, um, a view, a voice, I think we'll be much more empowered to actually uh, start to make sure that this sector of ours starts uh, making some traction and some movement on that side. Anyway, I just thought let me get those out the way. Uh, without further ado, let me then just get into the thick of things. Um, Chifira, I've been speaking quite a lot about TBCSA in our previous uh, four webinars. This is our fifth webinar. And uh, some of the commentary that's been getting back is either people don't know who TBCSA is, what do they do, and uh, maybe just spend some time just to kind of frame for us who is TBCSA, who constitutes that body of TBCSA, and uh, what do you contribute towards the, 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 the tourism sector and industry? Over to you. Uh, thank you, Cesar. Um, thank you very much for inviting me, and I hope that I'm audible. Uh, as uh, since I've introduced, my name is uh, Chipiwa Chibangwa, uh, and I'm the CEO of the Tourism Business Council of South Africa. Now, it, in short, it's called the TBCSA. Now, the TBCSA is a member-based organization. Uh, we are based in Centurion. Uh, we have um, about 31 members, uh, 
as the TBCSA, majority of our members are associations. Uh, now, what do I mean by associations? Uh, I mean that uh, within the TBCSA stable, you've got ASATA, which is the Association of South African Travel Agents, representing the travel agent community or the travel management um, uh, companies. You also have uh, SATSA, uh, which represent uh, the, which is the Southern African uh, um, uh, Tour Operator Association. Um, I may have butchered that a little bit. SATSA, you all know, it's led by David Frost. Um, and um, uh, it is one of our members representing various uh, subsectors, including uh, accommodation lodges, uh, inbound to operators, and so forth and so on. We also have the airlines. Uh, sitting under um, ASA, which is the local and regional airlines. We also have BASA, uh, which is uh, the board of airline representative representing the international airlines that come to South Africa. Uh, we have uh, Savrala, which is the car rentals. We have Fedhasa, which is the hotels and uh, uh, b and and restaurants. We've got Avea, uh, which represents attractions. Saboa, NAASA, CESA, FASA, and the list goes on. So we represent a broad uh, subsectors of the, of the uh, tourism industry uh, through this uh, association. We also have corporate association members like the large hotel groups, some big tour operator companies that are also part of the TBCSA as corporate members. Now our membership is not exclusive. Uh, only a few people. It's uh, anyone who can uh, qualify to be a member. Uh, they can be a member. All associations that wants to join forces with us, they can come through. Uh, we represent, uh, um, uh, you know, quite a large amount. Uh, we think that, you know, we cover, you know, in terms of the bad nights and the tour operators and the travel agents and everything else, around 80%. Uh, and we don't uh, profess to represent everyone because there are those that are outside of the associations that may not belong to associations that are members of the TBCSA. And again, TBCSA is the Tourism Business Council of South Africa. Uh, and one other big aspect that we do, uh, we administer the collection of the tourism levy uh, under TOMSA, Tourism Marketing South Africa. So that is collected through TOMSA, but TBCSA is the one that manages TOMSA and ensures that we collect the tourism levy that helps us to market South Africa as a tourist, as a tourist destination. So that's another part that we do, uh, and we contribute that uh, levy to, um, uh, to the efforts that are made by either South African tourism or any other government entities that assist in marketing South Africa as a tourist destination. So that is the TBCSA in a nutshell. It has a board uh, which is uh, elected every two years uh, through the AGM. Uh, and then it has a management that's led by myself. Uh, we are a small, modest team uh, that assist you know, our members. Uh, and also those that are not our members, we do assist. We do get involved in a whole lot of things uh, you know, in other associations that are not TBCSA members that come to us and they say, you know, we want to know about, uh, you know, certain, you know, matters we are able to assist. Uh, we're an open organization, so feel free to join any associations that's affiliated or not even affiliated. Uh, we will talk to anyone. We'll make sure that, you know, we bring everyone together and we'll make sure that the voice of the industry is represented. So that is the TBCSA in a nutshell. Uh, I can go on and on whole day, uh, but we are, a, you know, a large association representing, you know, interests of both big and small. I know that a lot of people think that TBCSA has uh, only big companies. No, we have, uh, you know, the guest house associations, and we've got a lot of, you know, medium and small companies. In fact, the majority of the association members, as I a majority of uh, members of your FASAs, your SATSA, your Asatas, these are small businesses independently owned. Some of them are, are, are SMMEs and we make sure that, you know, we are representative across the board uh, and, and we are inclusive to anyone that needs uh, to come on board. So that is us in a nutshell and that's what uh, TBCA is, TBCSA is. And we welcome any comments or anyone who wants to join forces with our association members to do so and we are reachable uh, at any time. Thank you, Shifu. Thank you for that overview. Uh, let me just get into the thick of things there. I mean, 
why is it important to have one voice of the industry? You keep on talking about this. Can you maybe give us a sense in terms of one voice and why it's important? And maybe just maybe uh, give us a sense of any previous achievements or things that you've delivered on behalf of the sector for us to get a sense of uh, what you're able to do. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Susan. One of the most important things when you talk to government, both in a national or provincial or local government, it's important that you know we, as we as a sector, uh, we talk with one voice. Because the minute we we go there with ten ideas and twenty of these and thirty of that, government will look at us as an industry and say, "Well, you are not coordinated. We don't know." who to follow or who not to follow. So therefore, we may not be able to do anything. I'll give you an example of, of, of certain things that we have done uh, together with our association members. Uh, we have dealt with the issue around the unabridged birth certificates. Uh, you know, the TBCSA advocated together with, with his association members uh, from all, as, from, you know, all spectrum, from Saki, uh, to Tata, to Basa, to everyone else involved in our association, we will manage to sit down with Home Affairs and show them that um, uh, it is important to remove the unabridged birth certificate. It's, it, it is important to have more country given visa waivers. It is important to deal with issues around NPTR uh, and many other issues you know, that are important in our industry, be it issues at the airports in terms of lines. Uh, we are able to reach out to Home Affairs and have you know, a conversation and able to get things going uh, and be it issues with the Department of Transport and of course our own ministry, you know, tourism. If there are issues that we need to deal with, we are able to deal with those issues. So it's important that we are one voice. Uh, and I can't stress, stress this enough. If we are disjointed and we are trying to get things done, we will be talking and talking and no one will be listening. So it's important that uh, you know, we, we talk to those associations that are out there. That's their job to make sure that they get the collective voice. And uh, I'm not saying that everyone will, you know, will get their say. It's a democracy. Uh, we vote on, on various ideas and make sure that, you know, we take the ideas that are, are rooted in the majority. Uh, and of course, we kind of, we kind of avoid, uh, you know, uh, the minority that are there that are raising ideas that we believe are critical. Uh, you know, even if we, we are to vote, we need to make sure that, you know, we take into consideration those ideas. Issues around small businesses, issues around funding, issues around transformation. Those are the issues that we, we debate and we discuss and we push, uh, even as a TBCSA. We even have a transformation committee that deals with that uh, to ensure that, you know, we see transformation in our sector. So it is important, uh, you know, for us, for all businesses, big and small, independent, uh, medium, uh, those that are owned and listed at the stock exchange and those that are, you know, family owned or community owned. It's important for us that every business survives and every business voice is represented. And we talk to government to ensure that our voice, uh, you know, is heard. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Let's now get into uh, the state that you're in. Um, we're in the middle of a pandemic, um, the COVID-19 crisis, as it were. Can you give us a sense in terms of what has TBCSA done so far and uh, what are the plans going forward? And I can maybe kick in afterwards and give uh, the participants a bit of a view in terms of where we're at in terms of the recovery plan. But just before I get into that one, yeah, what has been TBCSA been doing since the pandemic? Yeah. No, th thank you, Cesar. So, so the first thing that we've been doing, um, uh, you all remember that, you know, the pandemic, um, or the outbreak or the COVID-19 started in, in China, in Wuhan. We all were watching and, you know, we could see from the tourism point of view that, you know, there is an impact on the numbers of bookings that we, this is what we call forward bookings. So we, we started to, to, to get into gear. And when the first case was uh, discovered here in South Africa, uh, and, you know, we, we, start, we sort of monitor the situation. We're still receiving international tourists and so forth and so on. Uh, and when we started to have a community transmission, this is when a lot of things started to change, uh, where, you know, most of you will remember that we then sent out an email to say, you know, we need to know where the tourists that are in the country, where are they situated, which part of the, which provinces they are in, which lodges they are in, how do we make sure that we understand how many tourists are in the country, so that we can start the process of, uh, you know, should 
the tourists needs to to be tested you know we need to facilitate the testing uh, and we did so uh, in the, as the initial stages to make sure that we identify where the tourists are, we identify the establishments that were housing those tourists. And I want to thank all of you for coming on board and really telling, uh, you know, and, and filling up the forms to tell us, you know, you have these tourists that are coming from these countries that have been identified as high risk, and some of them were able to be tested, and unfortunately some of them were tested positive and had to be quarantined. So the next phase from there was to make sure that, uh, you know, we prepare ourselves for, um, to identify quarantine facilities, as i.e. hotels or bed and breakfast or lodges that can be used for quarantine purposes, government and also by ourselves, uh, to ensure that, uh, you know, we are uh, helping as a sector. So we did that uh, by reaching out to all associations that have members that have facilities, we put together the list of those facilities, we have sent those lists of those facilities to government uh, in case they want to use these facilities as quarantine hotels. So that's one aspect that we did. But the next aspect that we did is that because we had tourists that were in the country that were brought here by ourselves, we went and funded three places close to the airport where all the tourists that, were that uh, had been tested uh, they, they needed to be quarantined for 14 days. That could be, uh, those places could be used to, as a quarantine facilities. So we did that here in Johannesburg, in uh, KZ10, and also in Cape Town, and we made those facilities available. That was for the quarantine purposes. Now, we had to you know, kick into the, another gear from there because we, we saw that you know, businesses you know, were starting to, to struggle. We were getting into a point where, uh, you know, forward bookings had dried up, cancellations had came through. We had to deal with cancellation. We had to deal with postponements. We had to deal with refunds. Uh, so after the, we deal with that phase uh, of cancellation, refunds, postponements, we, we then had to deal with, you know, what are we going to do as an industry? Uh, because now we don't have any tourists coming in, don't have uh, money to keep you know, funding these, you know, uh, operations that we have. So we then, through the Minister of Tourism, spoke to UIF, uh, which gave us a preferential treatment to sign an MOU with them to ensure that uh, we can process the UIF TS uh, uh, payments. That has had its own challenges. It's, the challenges are still going. Um, I meet with the, the UIF commissioner every morning. We chat briefly. We try to solve uh, the, the backlog that's there, and uh, there has been people that have received, you know, the payments. There are those that are still going to receive the payments. We're still working on that. And if you have any questions, there is a platform that we created through associations. And also you can email the TBCSA directly. We will look into, you know, those, those things. Now, with UIF, we signed a 12 month contract with UIF. Uh, now, the TS program is meant to last for three months. What we're going to be doing now is to talk to UIF to say, can we extend uh, these three months to at least end of December? Because we know that we're not going to get any economic activity that is meaningful and, and won't be able to cover you know, the cost of our employees. So we will be having those discussions to make sure that uh, you know, UIF extend uh, the relief for the tourism industry at least until end of December if there is money in the kit. So we are busy with that. We have started you know, talking to those guys. Like I said, the UIF processes are not easy. They have their own problems. And it is something that we're working on every day to make sure that you know, big companies, small companies, medium size, everyone gets the, the amount of money that uh, you know, they've applied for. So that is what we've done then. Then we move into the next phase of um, uh, because we have no economic activity, the president put together the risk adjusted strategy to say, this is level five to one, if, and these are the sectors that are gonna be operating based on these levels. And one thing that we did as, an, as, an, as a TBCS is to say, you know, we can't wait for that long. Uh, let's say, for example, for, for, to go back into work in December, October, or September, we needed to produce some protocols that, that that will guide our industry in terms of uh, uh, when do we open. So the protocols are pretty much, you know, what are the things that we're going to do to mitigate the spread of the virus? 
uh, and we develop a huge document uh, that covers all aspects of the industry to say, if you arrive at a hotel, this is the protocol that you're gonna, the hotel is gonna follow these steps to mitigate the risk, BNB, uh, car rentals, and so forth and so on. So it is important uh, that uh, we deal uh, with those protocols. We will be sending them back to everyone and to deal with, 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 uh, with the inputs. Thank you, Chief, and uh, we'll be talking about it for a second. I think just the one thing I'd like to, to pause on for a second that's quite important is on that UIF tears, right? Can you maybe explain then just to everybody in terms of how do I, as a small operator, interact through TBCSA to make sure that I can also uh, claim UIF on behalf of my employees? Just systematically, how does it work? No, absolutely, uh, system. Now, <clears throat> the UIF tiers will work for those employees that, have, that are registered with UIF and the companies that have registered those employees with the UIF. So you can apply as a company on behalf of the employees and the money is going to be deposited into the company's account. You will get a, an allocation spreadsheet that will tell you how much a certain employee gets. You can also do so as an employee if you are UIF registered, you can apply yourself to get you know, the UIF tiers. Now, that's only for those employees that are, uh, are, are UIF registered. Now, there are those that have, you know, UIF has been fast in others, they've been very slow on others. We have dealt with technical issues, there's been an increase in staff, and, uh, and uh, we hope that you know, in the next month, when we, when we see the next wave, you know, we should be able to get some improvement. And by the way, there has been the applications that I have tracked, we have seen 50,000 employees uh, that have, um, uh, are gonna receive this, uh, this TS program from our industry. Uh, I mean, this relief. Now, this is coming from around a thousand, just over a thousand companies that have applied for their employees. Now, I do know, for a fact that there are those freelancers like your tour guides um you know that that are very very important in our sector uh, that are not registered with uif and uh, i have received some few uh, uh requests to to look into the matter and it is something that we're looking into it because uh, the tour guides are part of our community um uh, they play an important role and there are others who work within our industry uh, that may not be registered for UIF but they're as important but it's something that we're looking at, into uh, perhaps you know to figure out if there can be a fund for that and how we set it up and, and how that's going to work but it's something that we're looking at I can't promise anything at the moment but um, it is on top of my list to to really scrutinize it but for UIF tiers those employees that have registered uh, with UIF through their their employers, they should be able to get uh, uh, um, you know the relief that they seek. It's for three months, which is the initial period. We will be seeking to extend it at least until you know the end of the year. Uh, and 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 that's and, and if you have applied and you haven't received you know your 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 tears money for the past, let's say you applied in the past ten days and nothing has happened, feel free to to send an email so that we can look into it. Uh, we can, uh, you can send it to your association. There are many associations that are helping the members. Uh, you can send it to ourselves, uh, but we prefer that you go through the associations that are helping out the members. But if you don't belong to association, you can send it to ourselves. We will look into it. Okay. Thank you very much, Chief. And uh, thank you, everybody, for just kind of giving me some uh, leeway over there. It's quite important that you understand in terms of how and the power and the strength basically have been organized. You know, you can tackle such things as the UIF if we have one voice coordinated as opposed to 10,000 different voices screaming at the same time where not much traction is going to be made. Um, I think Chief had already alluded to this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a couple of slides. And these slides are basically the framing slides towards the recovery plan. I'll be putting to you a bit of scenarios over there. And, uh, and then in the end, I'll give you a sense in terms of how uh, we are going to move forward from there. Um, let me just go over here. Yeah. 
just make this big. Sorry, there you go. Ah, so I think it's important just to spend a moment on this slide to give you a bit of a sense in terms of where we are. So on the left hand side is where the country as its levels. We are at level four now, we were previously at level five. And uh, the rest that you see there are merely, um, how can I say it, they are guesstimates, if I can call it that, based on the current trajectory. We have no clue as a country when we'll move to level three, as an example, or level two or level one. We have no clue how long we'll stay on level four. It will all depend on the trajectory of the pandemic. If South Africa responds positively to the pandemic, we will move down to level three as an example. If we mess it up as a country, we move back to level five. So therefore, those are the variables that are out of our control. And this is what the president took us through, I think about two weeks ago, in terms of the level themselves. As we stand right now, tourism is active at level one and a little bit in level two. Level two is mostly for uh, business tourism on that side. Now, here's where we're at, is that if we sit at level one and level two, realistically speaking, based on the current trajectory that we are seeing, right, um, where we've heard that September is likely to be the peak of the pandemic, right, it is likely that um, level two kicks in around November, level one kicks in around January 2021. That's based on the current issues, right? Now, tourism is ranked level one and level two based on its current form. And uh, the key thing here is that government is looking at this and saying, well, um, we've got to hold the pandemic back and tourism is about moving people in different areas. Now, the conversation that is happening, uh, dear colleagues, and that's what I'm inviting all of you into, is that through the TBCSA and other partners is to look at what can be done, what protocols can be introduced, both health and operational, in order to move the sector being rated a level one to say a level three as an example, right? To de-risk the sector. It basically saying that in our current form, it's rated level one. However, if we introduce the following things, it therefore gets re-rated to a lesser risk and can move up the scale. What it does, it compresses the time between now and when the sector can operate again. And that's the current call out there. I've received many emails from all of you, a lot of texts from all of you, which I appreciate very much, that are making suggestions at what can be introduced. What we're just doing now is to have a formal process of actually getting those submissions. One, it can be done via your association, ultimately to TBCSA itself, right, which a lot of you have done, or you can send it to TBCSA directly, right? And um, for this one, TBCSA has agreed for members and non-members to be able to click on a link, submit all your details, and make uh, your submission there. Now, the key thing here is that the sector is being rated on an aggregate as level one. It means it includes everything over there. The next stage right now is to say to you, when you're submitting your submissions, we want to look at it at sub-sector level, right? So within the transport, as an example, that's a sector in itself, right? But the sub-sector of it, it could be public transport, car hire, et cetera, et cetera. And each one has got a different weighted rating uh, or rather risk uh, that's attached to it. So that's the first one to say, we are looking for contributions, again, uh, via TBCSA, who will collate all of these and then present them to government, uh, which includes myself, by the way, another side to say, well, um, these are the protocols that we want to introduce based from soliciting views uh, from our members that can actually uh, take us to the next level over there. What does a recovery look like in terms of the first scenarios that are coming through? Like with many other destinations around the world, it's going to be led by local, by domestic, then regional, then international. What we don't know is the phases of each. Those phases will depend, A, on how South Africa responds to the pandemic itself, international. It'll depend on the international um, source markets 
or rather target or the, uh, countries on how they respond to it as well. So as an example, if we had targeted the US as an example as a key source market, right? We can get our ducks in a row on this side all good and well. But if the US as an example messes up how they're handling the pandemic, they won't be able to travel anywhere in the world because essentially they'll be causing a risk as to wherever it is that they're traveling in. I'm giving you a sense in terms of how fluid this is based on the scenarios of how is South Africa responds and also internationally our markets respond as well. So the first part of saying domestic is actually going to be split into two. The first part of domestic will really be about um, South Africans exploring, getting out of lockdown essentially, uh, going down to the local park, visiting friends and relatives, VFR, not so much revenue generating for the sector as there won't be much overnight stays. There won't be much in terms of uh, any activities, et cetera, et cetera, from the perspective. The transition point from phase one to phase two of the domestic sector is what we are saying is that when these health uh, protocols and operational protocols are put in place, that's assuming they're accepted by government, right? You'll then see a bit of a confidence, you know, uh, coming through in terms of the local traveler who will be able to travel to destinations locally and be able to consume, can stay overnight, et cetera, et cetera. This is where it becomes important to look at tourism, not just at an aggregated global one, but to rather look at the subsectors themselves and say, well, what do each one and what level of risk do they pose and how are we going to look at that, right? Then you've got phase two of domestic. Close to it will be the regional. Uh, regional is looking at possibly static in the space. And these are all the land borders where people are able to drive through in their cars. It naturally becomes the next stage as well. It is in line with global practice of how uh, the easing up cascades inside out uh, into, into that sector as well there. Uh, again, we have no clue as to what form or structure uh, or even which countries will be able to allow to come into the country and at one stage as well. Then phase two, and I think the rest is kind of self-explanatory. Uh, what becomes key is uh, probably on regional phase two, where we start to look at international air arrivals uh, outside of the country. Um, we cannot assume that all the airlines that used to exist will exist still globally. Secondly, as well, is that we cannot assume that all airlines will resume with the exact same schedules that they had previously. So all of these have to be renegotiated again in order to link up the country with the rest uh, of the world, as it were. Again, you want to link up with other countries that have also managed the crisis well, that don't pose a risk back into your country. And that's the difficult balance that uh, we always have to be uh, aware of uh, all the time over there. Um, which other one, sorry. Um, and then also as well, looking at international, um, you know, long haul, essentially, you know, from outside of the continent itself. Um, at some point in time, these protocols that uh, are being touted, that will be, you know, received from all of you, will suffice for local, for domestic tourism. But at some point in time, they'll have to meet the rigor of a globally accepted standard, which is yet, by the way, has not been developed by any of the global tourism bodies, UNWTO or WTTC. But ultimately, I think those will have to be phased in and put in, in, in place uh, from that perspective. Again, just to kind of reiterate here, you know, the recovery is local first, inside out, looking again of uh, opening up because um, tourism cannot operate, as an example, when there's still a curfew in place, when there's still provincial borders in place, you know, so those will be part and parcel of opening the sector up that allows uh, for the activity to happen. Uh, I think I was speaking to Chris the other day, or rather listening to him speaking about the airline side. You know, so when I think it's uh, level two, where airlines are allowed to operate, but can not operate outside of uh, provinces. I mean, they have to stay within the provinces. I think the only flight he mentioned that is uh, interprovincial is from Cape Town to George. All the others traverse across different uh, provinces as well. So these are all the bits and pieces that have to be put together as uh, we move through on that side. 
Uh, I spoke a little bit about this, about the, the, the tourism value chain, the ability to look at it, not as one big block, but rather as sub blocks in there. And that's the important that as you submit your submissions, we'd like to get it down as granular as possible that says, well, I'm in trans if you look at number I'm in transportation, but I'm in rail transport, I'm in mini buses and specialized vehicles. I'm in car hire as an example. If I'm in accommodation, surely a full service hotel is different from a backpacker lodge, from a campsite, from a caravan site, from a private rental, from a, a self-catering. Again, all of these need to be looked into it and say, well, um, actually, uh, this one is got a level two rating, this one will have a level five rating, based again on the risk that potential is there um, you know, in terms of uh, spreading the virus and everything else from the perspective. The other thing that uh, I'd like to make you aware of is the country is now rated a level four. That's at country level. There's expectation that will also be sub-country uh, rated. You know, um, A, the provinces will also get their own different, um, you know, risk rating and even right down to um, district level. This is to ensure again that we identify as a country where the hotspots are at. So whilst the self-catering facility may be allowed to operate in um, Northern Cape as an example, that may have a level five rating because it's got less risk, it may not be able to operate in another province that has got a higher risk. I hope that kind of makes sense. So you've got to come up with these and overlay them again with the hotspots across the country as to where things are at there. Um, this is just, again, the framing of it. Uh, the TBCSA, as I said, we have uh, they've, they've really agreed to say, we want to be the voice of the industry and whether you're a member or not a member of TBCSA, we will uh, solicit all the views and ideas and thoughts and bring them together and then propose them back to government in terms of how the different subsectors, um, you know, um, rate number two, and how the different subsectors will bring in risk mitigating strategies, these health protocols or, or operational protocols, in order uh, for it to move forward. Um, that's the that's the, the key summary, basically, that uh, we wanted to put out today in terms of uh, you know where we are at in the process. If you're going to ask me in terms of what's the quickest way to get the sector up and running again, it is really to bring ourselves up. We can scream and shout and all we want, but I think if we want to get the attention uh, that the sector deserves is to break all of this up and say, again, I'm in car hire, which poses a lesser risk than a minibus taxi. So therefore, we should be able to operate sooner than possibly later on uh, from that perspective. And I think that's the, the key thinking basically behind it. And uh, if I may, I'm just gonna pause for a second and I'll just allow Chifua to give his thoughts and views and uh, then we can talk about how everything fits together. Uh, Chifua, over to you. Uh, thank you, Cesar. Um, uh, thank you for your presentation. So one of the things that I've been talking about is that the the risk matrix that government has have put out uh, literally says that we can only operate on the basis of what he says presented in terms of you know our, we will start to operate somewhere towards the end of the year and as the tbcsa we we have been at pains uh you know going to government to say if we wait until end of the year we probably will be waiting for nothing because there won't be any hotels left. There won't be any, you know, TMC companies left. There won't be any event organizers left or conference organizers or people who build stands and so forth and so on. Uh, there won't be any tour operators left. We will have nothing to, to, to reopen. So that is why we jump into action to say, what is it that we need to do as an industry uh, now? to show that we can be able to operate at higher levels, meaning at the levels that we currently are at now, be it level four, level five, or level three. So we went out and, and, and 
went to our association to say, go meet with your members and let them tell us what is it that we can put together as protocols that will, will guide the operation of an establishment or car rental or an office or a cruise company and so forth and so on. Now, it, it's important that we do, this, do that as a sector to self-govern ourselves. So we put a draft document together that we, we, we got from all our association members to say these are the guidelines that will enable us to operate. In other words, it's, it's the whole issue around de-risking you know, the industry to make sure that we are able to, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, to open certain aspects of the industry. And, and these are quite important because you know, you, you, when you do these protocols, there are many small businesses that may not be able to, to, to apply this. And we, we're thinking around that as well to say, how do we help small businesses? We have one of our members, NAASA, which represents a lot of small uh, businesses, uh, i.e. guest houses and, and lodges. Now, if, if, we, if we don't assist smaller you know, uh, operators, be it the guys who are doing the shuttle services uh, you know, and everybody else, when one person breach uh, you know, the protocol, the government is gonna look at us all and say, well, you see, we allow you to open, but when you open, you, know, you did this kind of stuff, so therefore we're gonna close you down. So we need to be careful of that. So we've developed these protocols, uh, through the inputs that came from our, our association members. We will make this available so that a lot of people can read. You can still make your final inputs. We are using the, the protocol documents, uh, and this includes even the protocols for the airlines, by the way, uh, in terms of you know, uh, moving people from the domestic point of view. Because if we wait, as we have seen, uh, with Com Air, um, you know, they're already you know, on business rescue. We need people to be flying following some level of protocols to move within provinces, be it only essential workers or permitted services uh, that can be able to move around. And also we're saying that there are certain aspects of tourism that are not as risky, and therefore those should be, should be allowed you know, to operate. So it's quite important that you know, we, you know, we get this right from the sector's perspective, and we put this together and make sure that we follow them as the guidelines and we're able to you know to show government that you know we can deal risk you know this this industry you will, we will have seen from the president's uh, uh newsletter he said that we may be living with uh you know coronavirus for years to come so if it's gonna be here for years to come we need to make a plan as an industry to operate within uh with this coronavirus and make sure that we mitigate the, the impact of it uh and this is something that we're doing uh you know we we have been um, you know, talking to various influential people uh, from businesses to assist us to really get, you know, uh, you know, tourism ahead of where it is, you know, now. We want to start operating. We need to get some airlines starting to fly, uh, be it domestic, be it point to point. Uh, and we need to make sure that, uh, you know, we, we deal with, you know, uh, we deal with it from the protocol point of view. That's one, that's one aspect that we're doing and we're pushing that heavily now to make sure that certain aspects open. There's no reason why from our minds uh, that we shouldn't have domestic air travel. There's no reason why certain provinces that have a lesser you know, impact, i.e. Limpopo, Northern Cape, uh, Bumalanga, why can't we have certain activities that are provincial that are tourism related, you know, happening uh, because those provinces are not as impacted and should they suffer the same, you know, as, you know, the big metros, uh, we don't think so. We think that, you know, we should allow certain activities to happen in Mpumalanga and Limpopo. If people want to get married in Limpopo, Mpumalanga, or Northern Cape, should be able to rent a, a space, they should be able to get married and, you know, the owner should be able to have some sort of, a, you know, um, financial you know or economic activity going on in those provinces so that's that's one that that is one thing that we say now moving away from the protocols we will make this available uh, a lot of people participated there were a lot of webinars that were hosted by various association members i know saki did uh, some discussion with their members uh, the airlines did so the two operators did so the accommodation providers did so including the attractions themselves uh, to make sure that they can put together, you know, uh, 
we can put a rich document uh, that we can present to government as a guideline for our, for our sector. Now, moving from that uh, to, to what Sister was saying, the recovery. It's very important that we start thinking of how we're going to recover and where we're going to recover our market share. And uh, what we've done as the TBCSA, we said all our association members will go and talk to their constituents and they need to come back to the TBCSA with the recovery plan, which will then take all these plans and merge them into one document to present uh, to government. Now, we do realize that there are people that don't belong to associations. Uh, I do know that, uh, for example, uh, I think I saw something from SATSA about the, 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 the webinars that they're doing about recovery plan. There's something from FEDASA that's, uh, I was told by the CEO that is happening. Saki is working on something. It's important that you know we work on this recovery, and then we come we come back with, you know, a, a, a plan. And so is other associations that are involved that are working on recovery. So that's quite important that we come back with that. Those that are not part of the associations, we have said that you know we need to open up. It's in time of crisis. We're not going to be sitting back and saying, you know, we're not going to entertain uh, because you're not a member of TBCSA. Uh, and of course, SAT will entertain those, but in order for us to do this in a structured way, we came up with a, a, a link where you can take a survey, you can share your thoughts. We'll take all those, analyze them, and, and make sure that they are you know, added into the larger document that we're working on. So, so that's, that's quite important, but go to your association, talk about these things, talk to us directly, Give us your thoughts on the survey. We should be able to come up with a, uh, with a recovery plan going forward. It's going to be an uphill battle in terms of recovery. Every other country in the world wants to recover from a tourism perspective. Uh, and, you know, for us, you know, it may start from domestic front, uh, but we want it as a TBCSA, we want this recovery to start now. We want certain aspects of tourism to be opened. Uh, and of course, we, we can't open if we don't have airlines flying up and down. We need airlines to get back and to start flying. Uh, and is that important to make sure that we preserve the jobs that we have within the sector? If we don't go back to work now or in the near future, uh, we are expecting a huge you know, job losses. So I just want you to know that you know, as the TBCSA, we are working very hard with the association members uh, you know, to make sure that, you know, we return to some level of economic activity. Uh, regardless of whether you're a member of TBCS or not, you know, this is bigger. This is about the industry. This is about the survival of all of us. This is about the jobs that we support, 1.5 million jobs that are supported. This is about that job in the village and that job in that particular town and that job in that metro, small company, big company, independent, uh, that adventure activity, uh, you know, it's about that. You know, we're not doing this selfishly. We're doing this as working hard to ensure that, you know, we return to some level of economic activity. And uh, we won't stop until we return to some level of economic activity. Thank you, Chief. And thank you for that uh, comprehensive overview. Um, I think there you go, uh, you know, tourism colleagues and industry. Um, one thing is very clear here. This is not going to be a top-down government says so type of recovery, but it's really going to be built from the bottom up, right? In terms of making sure that all your voice is heard. Here's a perfect opportunity, again, for all those that maybe either thought we're not being heard or not, you know, belong to any association, you know, please make your submissions. It's open from now until Thursday, 14 May midday. And the TVCSA is going to be getting all of these and then uh, present them back uh, to government. Uh, Chifua, um, do you maybe want to give uh, all the people listening in in terms of what the next steps are next in terms of you've received the submissions, you've analyzed them, you'll have the health protocols, who do you present them to, uh, who ultimately makes a decision, by the way, to say, well, it's now lifted, you can now re-rate to X, Y, and Z. Just maybe give us an insight in terms of uh, how that is going to work out. Thank you, Cesar. As soon as we, we, we compile, you know, the response from everyone, and as soon as we have workshop all the responses, and we'll put together a sound document uh, that we believe 
uh, is going to get us, is going to move us forward. We will present this uh, to the Minister of Tourism uh, because she's the custodian of our, of our uh, industry. Uh, and we will, you know, sit down with the minister, uh, walk it through together with their team, and their team is obviously SA Tourism uh, and uh, the department. Uh, everyone has their own responsibilities to do. Uh, and we will motivate for, for the, you know, this recovery plan to be implemented. And, um, you know, as soon as we've done that, you know, we, we, the minister will take that forward. You know, this needs funding. When you talk about recovery, recovery plan, there has to be some money that's put aside to ensure that, you know, we are able to market ourselves and return to some sort of a normalcy, uh, whatever that will mean then. So this will be presented to, 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 to the minister, SA Tourism will be there, the entire department will be there, and we'll make sure that, uh, you know, we move forward, you know, from that point of view. And just so I can, you know, uh, sort of contextualize again fully, is that everything that we do, uh, we make sure that, you know, we have a buy-in of the minister. And everything that we, we do, we make sure that, uh, you know, we present it, uh, you know, be it protocols. We make sure that the minister is able to present, for example, protocols goes to the National Command uh, Council, who makes decisions uh, to make sure that, you know, certain things can be opened. Uh, of course, the issue around recovery will then go to the, to, to, to the minister. Uh, she has to allocate budget for CISA to be able to operate. Uh, and be able to implement these things so that we can start to see movements of tourists, be it you know business tourists or leisure tourists or those that are coming for uh, you know conferences or exhibition. So it's to make sure that you know we are heard, you know, to make sure that you know we all participate and everything that we do will make its way to the right people and ensure that uh, we get the right response moving forward. I think that that's quite critical because majority would say that we don't know where these things goes. They go all the way up. And uh, just to add, you know, we do get, you know, opportunities here and there as a TBCSA to even meet with the president of the country. I've done so in, in several occasions to present the tourism case, you know, via different uh, uh, business uh, uh, forums like uh, what we call the PPGI, the ISBUSA. So we make sure that we participate in all those to represent the voice of tourism. So we are working hard. We are making sure that uh, we return to some normalcy. Recovery plan will be good. Uh, and it will lead us into, you know, a place where we can work as a joint cooperation between ourselves as TBCSA and government uh, via the SAT uh, to make sure that, you know, when we do those marketings, uh, we're able to get more tourists coming into the country. Okay. Thank you, Chief, and thank you very much for the interaction there. Just to kind of pull all these pieces together, the key focus right now is on about de-risking the sector from the current level one and to actually move up. Because by moving up, you get closer to the ability to open. I think that's the, the key focus thing. And it's a right now issue. Uh, I've put up the ways to actually link and, and to contribute and submit your proposals over there. This is what TBCSA will be working on quite deeply with. And then once they have a view, they will present these to government in terms of here's the ultimate view of how the sector will be de-risking itself and please move up a level. Once that is done, then parts of the sector will start to operate in different environments uh, based on the assessment that is there from the perspective there. So again, I just want to say, please, 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 uh, make your submissions, uh, put them in, and uh, make sure that uh, it's actually concluded uh, from the perspective. Um, there are so many questions and there are so many um, chats that are coming through over here. Here's what we do after each run, by the way, because it's quite impossible to go through 165 questions you know, in, in a session. We compile these together, and it actually helps us with the next webinar that we're going to be having so we can start to talk about the specific issues here. I've seen questions around in terms of the three page presentation that was sent out there. We will be sending out to all the people that are registered uh, basically on this uh, webinar. So you will be getting it on your inbox. And uh, again, please engage with it, have a view. It's the lay of the land. Let's just be smart in terms of what are the things that we're gonna put in place in order to get to where we need to go to. 
Okay, Chief, you literally have two minutes left. Any closing, um, you know, sentiments that you want to share with us uh, before I kind of wrap it up? Uh, thank you, sis. I think that, uh, you know, your participation as the industry is important. Uh, please participate. Please share your views with us so that we can pull together this document. Just remember one thing is that we understand what you're going through. We are going through, you know, to get through this together. We know that there are people that haven't gotten paid. We know that there are people that will not get paid in the next couple of months. We know that people have anxieties, you know, as far as where they're going to get their next meal. I just know that we are in this together. We understand where we, are, we all are and we will do this together. This is our industry. Uh, we worked hard to bring it to where it is. We'll make sure that, you know, we rebound, we come back. And please talk to your association, if you're association members, work through your association and uh, give us your feedback of recovery. If you're, uh, you're not, you don't belong to any association, feel free to use the link that we've sent through. Just remember, we are all in this together and uh, we are not gonna leave anyone behind. This is our industry, we'll fight for it. We'll make sure that we come out winning. And uh, that, there's no other way around that. The only way is forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it coming through. Um, colleagues, thank you very much for tuning in and listening in. Uh, we will continue with the sessions. There will be more webinars coming through. And I'm just trying to find a pattern, maybe on a weekly basis, that we just start to touch base. And I'll be bringing through different uh, panelists and members who contribute different uh, kind of views there. But for now, I just want to focus you. Please, let's make the submissions so that we can de-risk our sector and essentially move up a level. Uh, thank you all, thank you for uh, dialing in and uh, have a fantastic day, stay safe. Thank you very much, bye-bye guys.